watching Medfield TV, community shows. Steger and I'm one of the um, committee chairs for our 100th anniversary. We're so very grateful that everyone could come out tonight and so happy that the weather was great. Um, we also wanted to just say a few thank yous because of course to put some one of these events on takes a lot of help and the community really came together to support Medfield Girl Scouts on its 100th. So I just would like to say thank you to Memo for supporting us with putting together the sound system, particularly Henry Marcel. He's always around to do um, the holiday parade and the park, the Baxter Park Memorial Day Parade sound system. And he was, we are grateful he was able to come today for us. Tim Mitchell Funeral Home for giving us the, donating the um, tent that we have to Shaw's for the sheet cake that they made. And to all the Bedfield retailers who gave us specials for our 100th anniversary. I hope everybody took advantage of going and getting a smoothie or a drink at Starbucks or pizza at the um, Royal Pizza and the other places around town. Um, and also to the public schools for um, helping to support and celebrate for our 100th anniversary. We're very excited. It's finally here. We've been talking about it for, 100 ye uh, for um, all year that it's our 100 year anniversary. It's a really big deal. We're one of the oldest service units in the country and the Red Rose Troop that was started 100 years ago today, today is the actual day that they had their first troop meeting for the Red Rose Troop 1. Mrs. Inches, Miss Inches and uh, Miss Haskell got together and they decided that they liked the story and the ideas that they had heard from Julia Gordon Lowe about Girl Scouts and they wanted to bring that to Medfield. So they started a troop with 25 girls 100 years ago today. And today in Medfield, we have over 350 girls. So we're very excited that we have such a great program supported by all of our wonderful volunteers. So I'd like to, on that note, introduce Jeanette Pasapitas and Linda Frawley, both of our service unit co-managers here in Medfield. Linda's been um, service unit manager for over six years. 
Um, well, Linda does a lot. As there, someone said, a little Daisy Astra at the library a couple of weeks ago when she was doing another event. Do you own Girl Scouts? So we think about we think about Linda as owning Girl Scouts here in Medfield because she does so much. And Jeanette Hassapetis has been our service service unit manager for over four years, three years. So Jeanette. So good evening, everybody. I'm glad everyone was able to come out. It's the weather's gorgeous. Uh, you all look like you're having fun out there, having picnics, and the girls are look adorable. And I'm so glad you all came. Um, a big thank you to Catherine Steger, who was really the person who put 99% of this together tonight, as usual. Um, thank you so much, Catherine, for your time and dedication um, to Medfield Girl Scouts. And uh, you two have done countless things for Medfield Girl Scouts over the years. So Catherine is, together with Linda, are two of the biggest drivers of Medfield Girl Scouts. And we wouldn't be here today probably uh, without them. So thank you very much. Medfield Girl Scouts, it's the volunteers, um, but the parents do a lot within the troops. This is a completely volunteer run organization and we appreciate everything that you do, getting your girls to all of, all of the troop meetings, um, helping at all the field trips, um, the holiday parades, there's countless, countless things that all of you do to make us so successful. And a hundred years says a lot, so thank you all very much. Enjoy your night. the representative couldn't come tonight but he sent me to give you guys a big congratulations on 100 years um, speaking of that 101st and our 100th anniversary of the cookie sales I'm hoping for a discount so, uh, but call our office <laughs> anyway guys congratulations all right enjoy the day Um, we're very excited that, again, we're, you know, the volunteers are um, an organization here in Medfield for Girl Scouts, and it's just been a wonderful group to be a part of, and I'm just so very honored to work with the women um, and the other women who I didn't have a chance to mention that helped with today, Adrian Bruslin, Denise Ayanon, um, Tracy Davignon, Alice O'Connor, uh, it would, you know, it takes a village, as we say. Mary Lee Fleischel, there were a lot of us that brought this to fruition today, and I'm just really grateful to have the honor to work with these women because they are amazing women. We all started off as young girls. Um, I was a Girl Scout when I was seven years old. My grandmother was a Girl Scout for 50 years, and it's just, it's fabulous to be able to pass down the tradition to the next generation. So, Daisy's Brownies, we're going to be taking pictures tonight 
and we're going to update our history book and you all will be in there so in another 20, 30, 40, 50 years when girls look back, when girls look at the history book, they're going to see all of your faces in there. So make sure you, when you see a camera, you strike a pose, okay? I'm going to invite Trills and Chills up again for another song for us.
And as um, Michelle mentioned when, during her remarks, we're honoring two women. Uh, we thought it was appropriate on our 100th anniversary to recognize two women who have uh, set the role models, have been role models for many girls in our community over the years. And the first one we'd like to recognize is Ann Thompson. Ann, can you come on up? For those who know Ann, you know that she has been around and um, has been our town select woman for many, many years. She has been a community advocate. She has been an EMT, has done our CPR training for us over the years. She had troops of her own um, when her kids were younger, and she has inspired her own daughters to be troop leaders. And Anne's going to share a few stories because she had the great opportunity to know some of our founders of the girls, some of our first leaders here in town um, when she moved here. So I'm going to let her share those um, stories with you. I'm, I'm a little older than your current leaders. I think you can tell that. Um, I joined Girl Scouts during World War II. I was seven years old in World when World, World War II started. And I had already begun to knit. My mother was a knitter. And so our mothers decided that what we were going to do was we were going to make blankets for the soldiers. I was seven years old. There's no way I would have been able to make a whole blanket. So we made what we thought were squares. They were probably circles, triangles, oblong, who knows. But our mothers would then sew them all together and they'd walk to the army hospitals for the soldiers and the Navy people wounded in the war. And we always felt that our Girl Scout troop helped win the war because we were sure we had made some friends and made people feel better by seeing our crazy little squares sewn together. We also wrote uh, letters to soldiers that had no family members. And they would send our Girl Scout leader a list of people that they had some letters written to them so they had something writing and we would do that too. So Girl Scouts went on and on. I got to went to the Lovers School, finished high school, finished college, moved around a few times. Then I moved up to Medfield. And the first person I noticed driving down my street, I lived on North Street at the time, was a, uh, what I thought was an older woman. She was probably in her 50s. That was very old for me then. Um, driving about two miles an hour down the street. And I eventually found out who she was. I'll tell you later. She's very involved in Girl Scouts. But when we moved here, my daughter was in third grade. My daughter, who became a leader herself for 12 years, was in third grade, and they didn't have enough leaders. So they asked me if I would take, if I really wanted my daughter to be a Girl Scout, would I be a leader? So I said, well, I'm from out of state. I know nothing about Massachusetts. And they said, we'll find you with somebody else. So they found me this lovely lady named Jean Dumble, who also was from out of state. We knew nothing about New England, where to hike, where to do anything. But Jean Dumble was, turned out to be such a great friend, and their first or second meeting, she asked me if by chance I played bridge, and I said, yes, I did, and she said, oh, great, because our development's new. I live on Kenny Road, and we only had three bridge players, uh, seven bridge players, we needed eight. That was 52 years ago. I'm still playing bridge with the Kenny Road people, and so I, Girl Scouts brought me into a whole new world that I never would have had without the Girl Scouts there, and we had a tremendous amount of fun. We hiked, we, we uh, camped. My favorite camping story is this. Uh, I was expecting a child, and we were camping out, uh, and it rained. The, we do, to my camp out in tents. It rained horribly all day the first day. Our husbands felt so bad for us. So they decided they would come in with some beer, some wine, and some pizza. So they went into the campgrounds looking for us, and there's no way to tell where we were, so they would knock on the tent roofs and say, Hello in there, are you from that field? Hello in there? Finally, they said at the seventh or eighth try, they found our tent. We greeted them like, holy mackerel, it's like Santa Claus has come. So they, we were so pleased. So the following night it's rained again. They decided they would do it again. So once again, they go up to the place and they start going into the driveway and they're stopped by hordes of policemen, blocking, blocking everything. And uh, my husband and his friend said, well, why can't we go in? Our, friend, our wives are, are camping out with girls out. And they said, some crazy men were going through the tapes last night and scaring everybody in the campgrounds. So nobody's allowed anymore. So they went home and drank all the beer and ate all the pizza themselves. <laughs> but we had a wonderful time in scouting. I hope you do too. And I found out later who that little lady was who was driving so slowly on your street. The lady's name was Mrs. Bing. And I didn't meet her until I was a leader up here. 
time she let us use her house on White Street. We let us investigate her backyard, investigate her house, which was very old and very big. She let us do almost anything we wanted there. She was wonderful, and she was in, in Girl Scouts before I moved here. She was still involved in Girl Scouts when I was a leader all those years later. So I hope that you ever become Girl Scouts, you too have lifelong attendance and long, lifelong interest in Girl Scouts. So enjoy the scouting as much as we all did in my whole family. Appreciation Award in gratitude to Ann Thompson for your years of service in helping us guide girls in becoming scouts with courage, confidence, and character, and for the outstanding example you have set for our girls through uh, your public service and dedication to the Medfield community. Thank you, Ann. And um, our next honoree just made it. We're so excited um, to have her with us tonight. So Denise Garlic is our state representative, and she has been um, also a Girl Scout leader herself. She has been a public servant for uh, since 2000 and excuse me. <laughs> Seven, and um, she has continually uh, been out there in our community here in Medfield. She always comes to our bridging ceremonies, our gold award ceremonies, and we're just so very grateful to have her with us this evening. And she has a special proclamation she's going to share with us now. So, Denise. Good evening, everyone. You picked a beautiful night for this great celebration. I wanted to tell you just briefly what scouting means to me. I was a Girl Scout. I was a Brownie Scout and a Junior Scout and a Cadet Scout. I was a Girl Scout leader for 31 girls who went through their Silver Award. And I was the leader of a special needs Girl Scout group too. And to me, it's always been about three things. It's been about community. When you find a bunch of other girls just like you that want to work on the things you want to work on, and care about the things you care about. It's about service and the kinds of things you do to help your town be better and to help other people. And most of all, to me, it's about leadership. And we need good girls who are leaders and we need good women who are leaders. So to all of the girls who are here, to all of the women who have been leaders, and to all of the boys and men who are our friends and our allies and everything we want to do, congratulations to all of you. And this proclamation is from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and it says that it is for the Medfield Girl Scouts in recognition of a hundred years of excellence in empowering and educating girls this achievement is testimony to the strong commitment to the girls of the Medfield community, and it is signed by the Speaker of the House, by myself, and by Representative Sean Dooley. So we are so very proud of you. Strong girls come from good families. Good families come from good communities. Good communities make for a good state and a great nation. Thank you for what you're doing.
The preceding was a production of Medfield TV.